John, let's talk some World Cup, NFL ratings, and college football's future. And Andrew, Messi to MLS? Into the middle for Lionel Messi! And we're back. The Marshan and Oran Sports Media Podcast. I'm Andrew Marshan, sports media columnist for the New York Post. He's John Oran. Our good buddy there, John Arad. Is- the media reporter for the Sports Business Journal. John, this week, it's me and you going at it. Uh, if you want to go back, we've had some really great interviews with Andres Cantor uh, from Telemundo. Uh, World Cup fame goal uh, last week. Week before, Mina Kimes from ESPN. Uh, and the week before that... Aaron Andrews from Fox uh, and our own clothing line, like John Orant has. Uh, if you go back to that one, you find out more about that. Now, Andrew, in that pod, we mentioned the Johnny O brand, no relation, of course. But I got an email afterwards uh, from Bob Thompson, who is uh, the king of Twitter now, former Fox executive, said that Johnny O was founded by a guy called John O'Donnell who used to be an ad sales executive for Fox Sports. So it all comes back to sports media, man. Well, it's all full circle. All right, let's get to it. Who's up? Who's down? Who's up? Who's down? Andrew, lead us off. John, my who's up is Roger Goodell. And how could he not be? When you look at the Thanksgiving ratings, 42 million viewers For the Giants and the Cowboys, that's the most watched NFL regular season game ever. It goes dates back, I think, to 1988 when they started keeping full track of that. Uh, And then the early window with CBS, 31 million for Lions Bills. Now, let's just acknowledge there is now uh, out of home viewing is being counted. So that probably helps these numbers. But still, however you slice it, uh, what a turkey day. For Goodell, for the NFL, for Fox, for CBS, uh, a total of 73 million people. You know, you got obviously people watch both games. Uh, really good for the NFL. Listen, Andrew, they're adding in out of home, but everything we've been talking about for the year that this podcast has been on has been about cord cutting, and there are fewer people that are watching television now. Those numbers. Like, let's not take them lightly. They're 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 huge. That's a good, that's a good who's up this week. My who's up is Dave Brown, who is a former ESPN executive, who is the mastermind behind these early season college basketball tournaments. He set up the ACC Big East tournament back in the day. Uh, he had, uh, set up the ACC Big Ten tournament, which this week is seeing its final ever run because, of course, ESPN has no uh, Big Ten rights uh, after this. Uh, Nick Dawson is the one. Dave Brown retired a couple of years ago. Nick Dawson is now the, the guy that's uh, in there uh, creating these schedules. ESPN now is going to have an ACC SEC challenge. And for the Big Ten, who knows what's going to happen? I, there have been rumors about the Big Ten and Big 12 because Fox has a relationship with the Big 12. But don't forget, ESPN has like the first 20 basketball picks. So if they put a Kansas against Indiana, uh, almost certainly ESPN is going to pluck that and, and, and put it on its schedule. So it becomes a lot harder to have a conference on conference early season matchup for the big 10. Now that they have uh, gone away from ESPN. All right. Who's down. Why don't you take it? Who's down. You have Goodell as who's up, Andrew. I have Robert Kraft as who's down. Uh, Might not be the best week to put Kraft in the who's down. He, He, after all, he got some great press after he loaned the Patriots airplane to the university of Virginia to allow uh, uh, the Virginia football team to attend the funerals of those, uh, uh, of those football players who were murdered uh, earlier this month. But we're a sports media podcast and we're focused on sports media. And on Sunday, again, we had a situation where the NFL is stuck in, I don't know what decade it is, people that were watching NFL Red Zone on Sunday had a, a had one final game on Sunday afternoon, an overtime game between the Raiders and the Seahawks and Scott Hansen, the host, said, I'm sorry, by by rule, I can't show it to you. Go to CBS, which, of course, didn't have the national window, couldn't see the game. It's another rule that makes no sense. It helps out the, the, the TV partners, I guess, but it disenfranchises fans. Show the game. Just show the game until the end. So l- last week we had uh, Hans Schroeder on. 
for a, a similar Heidi type of situation where they cut out of an overtime game in order to show an opening kickoff that uh, undoubtedly went through the end zone for a touchback. Uh, a, another one here, the NFL, such a great TV product, but they have so many of these institutionalized rules that just make no sense and are not fan friendly. All right, my who's down, sticking to the NFL, it's Lamar Jackson, the Ravens quarterback. Uh, look, they lost a game on Sunday. Uh, he went to Twitter. Uh, he responded to somebody and he with a totally offensive tweet that he later deleted, um, which included the term eat um, and then a part of the male anatomy. Uh, and... So, okay, look, if he had just said that, uh, it's awful, whatever. I don't think he gets who's down. But then Jamison Hensley uh, called it anti-gay, which is appropriate. And Jackson tweeted that this is defamation of my character because not once have I ever mentioned or disrespect anyone's sexuality, sexual orientation, gender, religion, or race. You're reaching. Okay. Now, I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. It, it's There's no, look, don't tweet stuff that's totally offensive and, you know, because he's Lamar Jackson and I like Lamar Jackson, I don't know him, but, you know, from watching him, he seems like a good guy. But, you know, his coach, because he's Lamar Jackson, said, I tell my guys not to go to Twitter and, you know, after losses, uh, which I guess can be an excuse. But that's not the problem, right? If he said that in a post game press conference, which is what Twitter is akin to, this would be even a bigger story. And you just can't. It's just wrong and yeah is there a message that you should never respond to people on twitter especially if you're lamar jackson or somebody of uh, prestige yeah because you can't win but to act as if uh, a reporter from espn jameson hensley did something wrong or took it out of context it's in front of the world to see what you said lamar so uh he gets my who's down uh there's a really poor job by lamar jackson there put down the phone lamar let's get straight into the topics of course topic number one uh, in November, strange for November, but topic number one is the World Cup. You've been all over the World Cup. You are a massive soccer fan and a, a huge World Cup watcher. What do you think so far? So, yeah, we're recording Tuesday, right on the eve of or the right about the start time of the uh, U.S. game against Iran uh, and starts at two. Fox is still advertising it at one. All right, that's number one pet peeve. But here's my problem with their World Cup coverage overall. Number one, it's uh, they're they're treating it like it's the Olympics. It's not the Olympics, okay? The Olympics it has a lot of niche sports, and you want to do the Ebersol Rune Arledge thing, where you know you uh, tell all these stories that we don't know about, and they try to humanize it, and it's kind of a little ha hallmark. Uh, I'm not saying it's not real, but it's not totally real in terms of how they present the Olympics. Uh, that's not what this is. This is soccer. OK, it's the most popular sport in the world. Uh, the U.S. fan is sophisticated. And this is my biggest thing, is that the people who care about the coverage are the people who are your diehards who really love the sport. The people who are just coming in because this is a big event, it's the World Cup. They not they don't care about the coverage that much. And uh, yes, do you have to appeal to them a little bit and, and maybe explain something? Sure. But you can't have, uh, Harry, you know, before England versus U.S., you do a story on Harry Kane, uh, who's one of the best players in the world, who's the top scorer in Eng England's Premier uh, League, who has a tremendous backstory about uh, growing up and being a Tottenham fan and almost not, you know, his dreams almost not happening. And then you do a story about how he watched a documentary about Tom Brady. Uh, and that's what's inspired him. You don't even have Tom Brady in it, right? At least if you had Brady saying, Oh, I love Harry Kane or something. There's no Tom Brady in it. There is a $375 million relationship between Fox and Brady. So perhaps they couldn't get him, but, but you would think maybe he could be involved. And secondly, that's not the story to tell. And, and I think, that was about, you know, during the pregame, about half an hour to 45 minutes before that England US game. Who do they think is watching at that point? People who care about soccer, who want to know about tactics. The US had just made a big move up front. Uh, debate that. Tell us about that. You know, hopefully Fox learns from that. And then, you know, I, I can go on and on, but, but that would be like, those are a couple of points. Would you have been uh, more satisfied if that was a feature on uh, an American player? I mean, they 
they do features on American players and they're introducing those players. I put it this way. Look at what they do with uh, big noon kickoff, right? Ohio State, Michigan had a huge number. What, 17 million people? So more people watch that. So the same theory you could put for the uh, Ohio State, Michigan game is that, well, more people watch, so we should dumb down big noon kickoff and make it so we're appealing. They don't do that. They get into it. They they always put Urban Meyer in positions where he can succeed and explain things. I want to make a point. You're not actually saying that features are dumbing it down, are you? No, no, 100%. No, but like, but but I want to know like in-depth stories and look they did they've done a couple of those where the features are fine overall it's okay i mean the game broadcast as well um you know jb della camera's been doing a long time uh jackie oatley she's new to the broadcast they're not saying the players names they haven't said the players names enough uh you know jp's kind of picked it up a little bit uh you know in in recent games but that's part of doing play-by-play and I would say it's akin to the NCAA tournament. And I know how uh, play-by-players, uh, how they prepare for the NCAA tournament. They find out on the Sunday of a selection day of who, who what teams they have. You have, uh, let's say you're doing four games that first night. So it's eight teams. Not everyone's Kentucky or Duke or North Carolina. You get a lot of St. Peter's. You need to know everything, one through 12 through all that. You need to study. It's hard. It's one of the hardest assignments in sports casting. This is akin to that. When you're doing Ghana, you need to know everything about these players and you need to tell the stories as they've happened. And we've had some tremendous stories. I would invite Fox, go back and watch the Saudi Arabia Argentina game. Tell me, did the field, did the broadcast live up to one of the great upsets in the history of the World Cup? I would say it did not. I mean, they kept saying over and over how this is going to be, this could be an amazing big upset but you need we need more tactics you need to get inside the game and i get it you're just going to tell me and it strikes me as not the people necessarily doing the producing but at some level there's people who 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 aren't soccer people which is fine but they maybe don't recognize that you don't just because you're not a soccer person a lot of people are and this is a super. It's a very popular sport. We saw what the Premier League went for. Uh, we 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 know what the the rights go for these World Cup games. People are interested, and we're 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 at a stage where the fan is as sophisticated at so- about soccer as they are about other sports, and that's what NBC does well with the Premier League. That's what ESPN has done well. That's what CBS has done a good job with Champions League, and Fox I think needs to step it up, and and they haven't. So the World Cup this year to me is such an interesting experiment because it uh, took what is a a Sunday, uh, a summer, you know, month and put it right in the middle of November where it's uh, going up against college football uh, ending its season. It's going up uh, toward the run up to the NFL playoffs. You know, basketball and hockey have started. There's a ton of competition going up against uh, the, the World Cup. I've been really surprised at the numbers that I've seen coming out of uh, out of Fox and out of Telemundo, which have been much higher uh, than I expected. And I want to also go back to your who's up and Roger Goodell. Those numbers for the CBS early game were going against live World Cup action. And it, it's almost like two completely different audiences. You have like a the World Cup audience, which is very big, and you have the NFL audience, which is also uh, a, a very big. So it's a uh, th- this experiment to me uh, tells me a couple of things. One is these these early windows or earlier windows for soccer, international soccer, really like the the, the U.S. consumer is uh, is predisposed to watching. You know uh, the Premier League. Uh, you know weekend mornings, and so it's 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 part of a. It, it's easier to form that habit uh, to to watch that. And secondly. The the and th- this is going to sound silly to you because you're a soccer fan, but boy, the the World Cup is a big enough event to really go toe to toe with the top American sports uh, as far as a television property. Well, also soccer has changed, right? It's always been it's the next sport, it's the next sport. It's here. I wrote a column a while ago. Soccer is here. It's not the next sport. You know, we can have arguments if it's, a, the you know, who which are the top four sports and, you know, get a big fight with hockey people and other people, whatever. It's like, look, it, it's, it's on par with these sports. Go look around and 
you know, if you see kids, you know, who have jerseys on the, the, the two, now you're gonna say I'm New York biased, but when you travel and, you know, I haven't traveled that much, you know, in the last couple of years, but when you travel, the two things I always notice, and it's because maybe because I covered the Yankees, but are Yankee hats and premier league shirts and other soccer shirts. Those are the two things that you see the most. Um, now you see some NFL stuff and they're trying obviously to become more international, but those are the two things. It's popular and people understand the game. A lot of people, not again, not everybody. I get texts from people in the business who say, I don't understand soccer. It's boring. It's zero, zero. <laughs> I get that. And, I, and that's fair. I, I equate it to baseball in a lot of regards. I can watch any soccer game and be into it. And some people can't. Some people, golf is like that for them. Some people, hockey is like that for them. And you respect those. Like, I always just say, okay, that's good. I am happy for them. And that's fine. And there's no, like, I, you know, I never understood the people who kind of like have to downgrade the other sport. Well, well, well before we go on, I, I just have to do a little bit of a counterpoint. I, I do think uh, soccer is here, but in terms of a TV sport, it is a, uh, you know, the, the problem with soccer is the problem with domestic soccer, which is going to take us to, to the next topic. And MLS as a, as a TV sport it, it just it doesn't bring the ratings and while while the while the uh, uh the weekend morning is really successful for NBC and it's really successful for the Premier League imagine if that was on in prime time and 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 you had that many more viewers watching it that's the quality let's that gets us to topic too because that's the quality of the MLS as opposed to the times i know that they'll tell you that Time's been all over the place, and we'll see with Apple. With time's going to be set for Saturday nights uh, at seven thirty mostly, and then a few Wednesdays. Uh, but uh, the quality of the game needs to be there. Um, and so overall, and so look, we talked about this a lot, and this is a topic uh, that I'd heard too. Like some people associated with MLS have, you know, we've kind of messy to MLS has sort of been out there, and that rumor gained some steams with the times of London saying that he's coming to, uh, to Miami, uh, to play for inter Miami, David Beckham's team. And it's probably for a trillion dollars. And this is where we get into media and where you look at the Apple deal and they've been talking about selling subscriptions around the world. Well, if you're going to do that, you can tell me Messi's old. You can tell me, uh, ML MLS is a retirement league. He's messy. This is Michael Jordan, guys. So uh, if I were wanted to sell subscriptions around the world, he's the guy I'd get even at 35 years. I think he's 35, 35 years old. Uh, and it seems like they're going to get him with the Apple deal coming up. And you can't tell me that there are not a bunch of kids or a bunch of people around the world who still want to see Messi and might you know, put down $15 a month. I'm not saying 100% will work. You know, they might just want to see the highlights, but it can't hurt. Now, Grant, they're going to be paying him a boatload of money and who knows about ownership and they've probably given him the world. Uh, so financially, does it work out for them? I'm not sure. But in terms of uh, getting someone popular, uh, it's a pretty good move. Is it a bad move? Uh, of course not. I mean, it, it's probably a good move, but I, I do want to caution a, a little bit. We MLS has tried this before. I was at David Beckham's first game. It was an RFK stadium in DC when he was with the, I, I believe it was a galaxy, right? Um, here in DC, we had Wayne Rooney. I know it's not messy, but Wayne Rooney is big in England. Uh, didn't create a ripple here. And, and, and in fact, uh, the local ratings for DC United, even while he was doing some uh, amazing play on the field, were getting hashtags. They were so bad that the, the RSN down here, didn't didn't take free rights, you know, because they they would have to pay for the production and 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 passed on it. So we've seen this before. We still have to th figure out how to grow the game in America with with the, you know the best players. The most true thing you said in that they're not messy. Okay, those guys, <laughs> I, they're great. They're they they. Uh, I, I I'll even suggest bend them like Beckham. Beckham was a bigger name than Messi to the American that. consumer. It's just Messi again for the soccer fan. I know, but yeah, yeah the so you've Messi, already like, got the like soccer becomes, fan, Andrew. You you need to get the the other consumer. No, 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 but this is but when you're talking about Apple, you, and this is what we talk about with subscription and why subscription works. When you're trying, when you can reach a billion devices. Now, you know, I did that math the other day. If you're reaching a billion devices, you need 0.25 percent of those people to get to the 250 million dollar number. You have Messi. It's like having Taylor Swift exclusive. Now, again, a couple of things. Messi has to be into it. Can't be hurt all the time, not playing. He's got to be into it. 
Uh, they're going to bring a couple of players. It's got to feel like it's a real league. Look, ML, MLS is always going to have a problem because they don't have um, relegation. You know, that, that hurts the league in terms of viewing, which is when the bottom four teams can go down. And then in terms of like other leagues, the European leagues, they're always playing to get into Champions League or into Europa. And it just creates excitement. It's a really, they don't have playoffs, but they it creates excitement throughout the year. It makes every game kind of like college football once was very important. Uh, but if Messi, but Messi is special to watch play. And you're saying, well, yeah, you need people who like soccer. And I think that's like getting back to the Fox thing. Yeah. Stop trying to get the person who doesn't like soccer. That doesn't work. The people who like football like football. Now, yeah, there's betting, there's fantasy, and that stuff brings people in, but it's the storylines, and that's what you need. And look, Messi's is a good move. I mean, it's, I mean, obviously, it's a good move. How much they're going to bang him and all that stuff, the financials behind it. But if you're trying to grow the league, and I've mentioned Messi, I've written columns about Messi in terms of MLS and what it could do for it, but when you, and you're talking about subscription, this makes more sense, you know, because you're selling to the world. Um, and you want to become a world league and it just, yes. Is it messy going into retirement in MLS? Yeah, it is. But I'd rather watch Messi. If Messi, when Messi comes to play NYCFC, I'm going to be looking at my calendar uh, and seeing if I can get there. All right, John, let's go into a story. You broke Lenny Daniels um, leaving uh, WBD. Sports, <laughs> Warner Brothers, Discovery. That rolls off the tongue, Andrew. I love it. I have so much trouble with that. People are like, he evaluates sportscasters. He can't even say WBD sports without going so slow. Anyhow, Lenny Daniels, been at Turner Sports for 27 years. Uh, just give me John Orion's view of what's going on at uh, with Lenny Daniels and WBD sports. A uh, big change. I mean, Lenny Daniels is, uh, I described him in the uh, uh, the SBJ Media newsletter as a survivor. He was there for uh, Mark Lazarus. He was there through uh, David Levy. He was there through Jeff Zucker. Uh, he thought he was going to be the one running uh, WBD Sports. Uh, and he uh, he interviewed for the job. I, I talked to several people internally who figured, who thought that he was, you know, the, the front runner to get it. Six months ago, David Zaslov hires Luis Silberwasser uh, to, to come in over Lenny uh, at, at, uh, at the WBD Sports. So th they tried to make it work. And like I said, Lenny's a survivor. He lived through all the, the, those three other executives uh, after, after you know, six months. It just, it, it, it obviously wasn't working. Uh, Lenny it took off. He has nowhere to, uh, it, it, he didn't take off with, with the job right in hand right now. But there are two things that I I, I want to I want to stress. The the first look at this is like, oh my goodness, they're out of the NBA. Lenny Daniels, twenty seven years, he has deep relationships through the NBA. Um, we we all know what uh, David Zaslov said about the uh, the NBA. You know, we don't need the NBA. He said sports is hard, and this appears to be another sign that uh, Warner Brothers uh, Discovery is uh, preparing people to move away from the NBA. I don't believe that is true at all. Uh, I, I, I think that this was just a simple matter of, you know, th th there were two people in one position. Uh, everything I've been told is that uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is going to go very, very hard to try to renew with the NBA and they expect to renew with the NBA. And I don't think that this is any kind of tea leaf about that. And the other one is um, uh, Lenny Daniels was president of uh, WBD Sports. Uh, th that's now an open position. Who's going to fill it? Uh, I don't think anybody is going to fill it. I think that they're going to take those uh, responsibilities and put it among sort of existing staff. And while you're talking about Lenny Daniels with 27 years, you still have, you know, people like John Diamond's been there for, you know, 30 years. You have uh, uh, other people that have been there for- Yeah, let, let me, let me, John, can I ask you this? So just so break it down a little bit if you can, because I know it's a little bit speculative, but when you look at those other responsibilities, so, you know, Lenny oversaw everything. So who oversees the NBA now? Uh, who oversees the NBA in terms of what? Like who decides on like the direction of the coverage and all that stuff? That is uh, going to be Luis Silberwasser. And it's also going to be Craig Berry, who is sort right, of so the, Craig the Berry producer gets over more responsibility, so they're, which I, okay. they're, yeah, they're taking away sort of a, a middleman there. And so and they Tara have August does the talent. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, John Diamond does the ad sales uh, over there. It's been there for you know 30 years, as I said. Um, so they they still they have 
long-term people that are still in place that don't appear to be going uh, to, to be going anywhere. Um, I don't think that there's too much to read into this other than the fact that he went for a job and didn't get the job. Got it. And Nate Smeltz will be uh, still there. The you know head of communications. Uh, so that you know that's you know in terms of what they're they're messaging. And you know we we talked about how they signed Barkley and company for long term contracts. So yeah, it does seem like they want they just. Now, Andrew, you you tweeted uh, you you talked about it on the pod uh, before you tweeted months it. ago. We talked about this when you were actually. Well, go ahead. When when I was saying I think Lenny's staying, you were like, I think he might be going to ESPN. What do yeah. you know about that? Well, no, I said maybe. I said I think ESPN likes. I did think Lenny. I didn't think Lenny if he. Did, I didn't think he was getting that job uh, from what I was told back then. And then secondly, uh, I do think there's a relationship with Jimmy Pataro at ESPN. He's former ESPNer, uh, but I don't think that's happening at least right now. There's not a spot for him, uh, but uh, it's something to watch down the road. I think you made a good point. Uh, there's a lot of jobs out there, like these betting uh, places that are trying to get more into uh, TV and video and all these type of things. Could Lenny Daniels help? Apple, Amazon, even though they, you know Amazon's done a good job, uh, so they might not you know have room for Lenny Daniels. But there's a lot out there. There's a lot of opportunity you would think for Lenny Daniels. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, so this isn't totally shocking that this happened. It's just uh, maybe the timing. You know, we thought maybe it would happen a little bit earlier than it did. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot going on there. All right, let's move to the next topic. Big 10 and Pac-12. John, what do you got? Uh, well, first, the, the Big 10 had something unique happen uh, last weekend where during the uh, Ohio State-Michigan game on uh, Big Noon Window, or what, what is, I forget what Big Fox Noon goes. Kickoff. Big Noon big Kickoff. Noon kickoff. <laughs> what about Big Noon things? Window? I like that. They should change that. Company, they should change that the big noon window. Which copy, is a, dude, copy right. in your head because Mulliville Hill, you know, who who, who does uh VP over there, who does was he senior VP? If I, senior you know, VP, yeah. Don't don't, don't downgrade him. People go crazy. All right, so senior VP, all right, Mike. Uh is that he might not, he seems pretty chill. Yeah, they they love that they made they created the big noon window. So that's a I understand that slip by you. And so I'm I am watching the big noon kickoff. It's in the fourth quarter. Ohio State just kicked a field goal to make it a closer game than uh, than it turned out to be. And all of a sudden they cut to commercial and I hear the CBS SEC music. And the CBS had a promo that was running during uh, dur during Fox's game. Uh, apparently Fox is going to have a promo hy hyping the Big Ten uh, in a CBS game coming up. I don't know which one. Uh, and I, and NBC at some point is going to join in too. And what I think to be unique about that is that this is what the Big Ten wanted. Three big broadcast networks essentially funneling viewers from noon on Fox to primetime on NBC. And they're just going to keep, uh, if they show this kind of um, synergy well, energy around it. But, 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 oh, I but, said synergy. Co cohesion. Yeah. I had synergy. God, my, all my editors would strike that out of my copy, Andrew. Come on. They let you write synergy you mean, in the New York Post. Word. There's nothing corporations love more than saying the word synergy. I know. And so when they I don't even know that. They can have synergy between <laughs> networks. Oh my God. They must be going crazy. I can't even, can I even function after they get some synergy between networks? So while ESPN is going to have the SEC and they own all the SEC so they can be really strategic in ter terms of what games to put into what windows they're going to have to go against this big marketing might of the uh, uh, of the broadcasters i think that is going to be something really uh cool to watch uh, going forward let's get to the pack 12 what do you know yeah pack 12 i think it's interesting so uh we're waiting to see what the pack 12 does uh we've talked about how we think espn and amazon are the two most likely places and i just if you look at what's gone on with amazon uh, they just let go of 11,000 people. Um, then ESPN just made a huge change at the top of Disney, bringing in Bob Iger. Uh, and so it tells you where they are in terms of spending. Um, and Iger in his town hall, it's been reported that he is emphasizing profits over subscribers. And you just think, look, do I still think they can very well get the same number as uh, the Big 12 or in that neighborhood? I do, but you start thinking of where this is going and that's not exactly a great place to be uh, if you're the Pac-12. I'm not saying that they won't get the number, it might work out fine, but the idea that they'll get a lot more 
than the Big 12, which we've already said is not going to happen, I think is even more evident that's not going to happen. These places aren't going to spend big for the Pac-12 right now. And we're still waiting on the Board of Regions in California to see if they try to bring UCLA back into the Pac-12. And CBS's Dennis Dodd reported that if that happens, he thinks the Big Ten uh, might turn to an Oregon or a Washington. And so that might not even really work out that great for the Pac-12. So I think there's a lot of uh, rough waters, perhaps, out by the Pacific. Something that most likely is not going to happen, but I'm uh, keeping my eye on, uh, the ACC and the Pac-12 have had talks uh, about possibly uniting You know, the idea of going out into the market with, with a, a, a big or cohesive conference like that that has the big markets on both coasts yeah. is, uh, is uh, it's an interesting prospect. People I talk to say it's unlikely, but, but it, there hasn't been a final nail in the coffin on that. I on don't those see yet. why. Cause I mean, the way I think they look at it, most of these TV executives, they kind of assign a value to each school. So yeah. Do you want North Carolina and Duke, uh, you know, with uh, the top pack 10 pack 12 schools like Oregon, uh, et cetera. Uh, yeah, I guess so. But like, is that really going to get you more money? I mean, they're just, you know, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's going to get you appreciably more money uh, if you were to do that. And the ACC is kind of tied up for a while. So I don't, really I don't know if they'll get you more money, but I think it's, it certainly could uh, help you batten down the hatches while other people are coming and trying to cherry pick some of your schools. But how would it even work? Well, that's uh, the, 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 the devil's in the details there. I mean, they, they would have scheduling uh, back and forth. I mean, how's it going to work to have USC and UCLA come and play at Rutgers, for goodness sakes? Maybe if you like merged, I guess, if they, you know, the, the champions played each other, the ACC and uh, the big, the Pac-12, perhaps. But I, I, yeah, I don't necessarily see that. All right. You had a very New York story. Uh, uh, in, uh, new, uh, this was in the, your newsletter, right? The New York Post. Uh, no, I was in a nope, regular column, but yes. Regular column. Derek Jeter and Don Mattingly to Yes Network. What's, what's up with that? Yeah, they've had talks about going after those two. Now, let me be clear. I think Jeter's probably a long shot. Could maybe do a series or two? Maybe, right? And Mattingly, I texted with Mattingly. He said that uh, basically he has something else. Uh, that's mildly hot uh, that that's going on. He didn't say what it was. So if that doesn't work out, he seemed interested. He's very tight with uh, Yes's lead play-by-play or Michael K from when K was a beat reporter for the New York Post and the Daily News covering Mattingly back in the day. Uh, and so uh, I think Mattingly could be actually pretty good. Jeter, uh, had somebody tweeted at me, and I think they're right. He could be really great or terrible. Like, I don't think there's any between <laughs> Like, if he like lets loose a little bit, uh, you know, you'd like to hear Derek Jeter's thoughts, but he really hasn't shown that. Now, Jeter did do the uh, ESPN uh, documentary that he, you know, produced. So it had a big say in terms of what was put on the air. Uh, and then he was on Fox's pregame as a guest. Uh, and then he went on K-Rod with uh, A-Rod and Michael K uh, on ESPN during a Sunday night baseball broadcast. So he's been a little bit more out there than he's been Uh but it's an interesting thought and uh, yeah, some big name hunting uh, in New York. So, uh, you know, we'll see if that leads to anything, but free agency is a big deal with the Yankees and Aaron judge and the yes network. Uh, you know, they, again, we'll see what happens, but it, it has been discussed. It is on their radar. I actually thought Jeter was surprisingly good on Fox's pregame show uh, uh, at the, uh, at the world series. He only, he only made one appearance. So it's, it's easy to be good in that, I guess, but uh, yeah, it's something when you cover somebody like I just have talked to Derek Jeter so many times um, that when I hear him on these things, like I've kind of heard the same thing. So for me, it's a little bit, it's like not necessarily fair. Right. Cause I kind of, it's like kind of his, his thing. Right. Right. Like kind of, laugh kind of a little like make fun of the person he's with you know like david ortiz he made fun of a little bit that's like his thing which is fine it's not bad it's just not like i've seen it like you know and again he's i always say everyone's like, what's derek you're like i i'd say he's politely aloof all right so so you, you hate it when i do this but uh what's more likely mattingly or jeter mattingly okay and and mattingly is a uh, has more of a uh ceiling in terms of being a, a tv star I don't know about a star, you know, if it's star, if, star. Yeah. I don't mean, I, I didn't yeah, mean, I, mean I, I just yeah. would say this. I think Mattingly is a good addition because of who he is. Number one, number two, he has been in the dugout for the last 12 years. So he's got to know the league very well, which is important. So he'll know the players. It won't just, it's you, it would figure not to be, you know, the problem with these, most of these baseball announcers 
uh, is like, you know, back in my day, and all they do is like talk about when they played, and which can be interesting, especially if it's a legendary player, but it can kind of get old. You need to be able to talk about the contemporary, but you need to mix both in. And so uh, I think Mangley, in theory, would be able to do that. I can't wait. When we're doing this pod in 20 years, we'll be having this conversation about Adley Rushman. I can't wait, and Andrew. <laughs> you better break the story that Rushman's going to do. Uh, what channel will they be on, though? That's oh, if he can, yeah, if he gives this to anybody else, I'll be uh, pretty angry. It'll be like uh, Amazon Prime's Oreo broadcast is thinking about adding Adley Rushman. <laughs> John, we're going to wrap it up in a second. And also programming note, there is a scheduled extra pod this week. John and I on Wednesday uh, are scheduled to do a uh, podcast at the, what's the event called again? Media Innovators uh, Conference in New York City. It's a live pod. Uh, we'll be on stage with a, with a crowd. They're going to be passing out mojitos, branded Mando mojitos. They call the... Uh, the podcast, the Marshan and Oran uh, Sports Media Podcast in internally here at SBJ, they call it the Mando Podcast. And so that's Wednesday. So if you haven't gotten your ticket, can there still tickets available? Because if you're listening Wednesday morning, no, sold out. It should be sold out. It might be sold out. That, yeah, only a few sure only sold. a few tickets left, Andrew. Go to sportsbusinessjournal.com. Uh, go, if you go want to see us section. live studio audience. I told my family that. They said, well, there going to be two people. You know, they're going <laughs> to... There's a, hopefully yeah, the, the video. thousands of people, thousands, <laughs> thousands, standing room only. All right. I have a question of the week. We haven't done this in a, in a while. Um, it comes from Mo Khan on my Twitter. Would the NFL deviate from Thanksgiving tradition, have Dallas as a prime time Thanksgiving game to create a bigger TV number? John quickly. What do you say? Yes. No, no. I say yes. Eventually one day. To get more want, numbers, to juice the numbers. I want to get, I want to get uh, Greg Hughes uh, on my case here. NBC, Greg Hughes. What is the most uh, viewed window in uh, that the NFL has? Afternoon, you're right. Four thirty. Sunday afternoon, Dallas. Job, I, that, 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 they can't get bigger than that. Right, right around Thanksgiving, on. everybody's home, no chance. Mo Khan, you should have tweeted John Oren because he had the right answer. I had the wrong answer. You're correct. All right, they will not change that. You're you're correct. I was wrong. Um. I should have thought about it more than three seconds. Okay. <laughs> that All was right, a hot week. take. Call the week. <laughs> call of the week. Uh, okay, the call of the week. CBS, Greg Gumbel. Here's the play that everybody missed. Jacobs. Jacobs with running room right up the middle. Jacobs is on his way. The Raiders are going to win this game. Come on, NFL, you got to fix the rules. People should have seen that. Let's go. You're on red zone. You missed it. We all, I was watching it. You were watching it. A lot of people were watching it. We thought we were going to get the end of that game, and then they tell us to go to CBS. It was good for 60 minutes. A lot of us turned to 60 minutes, and you know maybe you got hooked on whatever story they were what telling. Was it? it was Anderson minutes. Cooper's dog, I believe, right? Well, I don't know. I didn't flip to CBS. No, you didn't stick around. I only saw it on my Twitter feed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew better. Uh, anyway, all right, again, Man, extra pod this week. This one's short. Give you another, you know, 40 minutes as well. Uh, look for that. I don't know when that's going to post, but sometime over the weekend, we'll probably do some global topics uh, on that in front of the live studio audience. You ready for that, John? Uh, I can't wait, man. It'll be fun. All right. Well, we want to first thank, before we go, AC Wyatt and Chris Mason, who uh, always do a great job of putting this together. Uh, we've had some very nice reviews of late, and we really appreciate those. So if you can, it helps the pod. Um, and give it the five stars uh, and then follow us. Uh, it's really great. And we really appreciate your support. Yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs>